The U.S. believes inspectors from the Global Chemical Weapons Watchdog have not yet been able to enter the site of the April 7th alleged chemical weapons attack on the Syrian town of Duma. State Department spokeswoman Heather Nord said that the U.S. had, inf uh, had information that both chlorine and sarin nerve gas were used in the attack and was concerned that evidence was deteriorating. French President Emmanuel Macron delivered an emotional justification for France's role with Britain and the United States in bombing Syria following a suspected chemical attack on a rebel-held area, replying to criticisms by some EU lawmaker, lawmakers by saying that France would not remain inactive when images from Syria showed children and women killed by chlorine attacks. Now, Saudi Arabia would send troops to Syria under the U.S.-led coalition if a decision was taken to widen it. Foreign Minister uh, said that Saudi Arabia was in discussion with the U.S. and had been since the beginning of the Syrian crisis about sending forces into Syria. He also added that Riyadh had previously proposed this idea to former U.S. President Barack Obama. U.S. President Donald Trump and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will seek common ground on how to deal with North Korea's nuclear challenge amid fears in Tokyo that Trump might be prone to make too many concessions. Trump has forged close ties with Abe during his 15 months in power and the two have bonded over rounds of golf during Abe's last visit to Florida more than a year ago and Trump's visit to Tokyo last November. Former director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, James Comey, arrived in New York to speak with talk show host Stephen Colbert. Comey, who was fired by Trump last year amid an FBI investigation of possible ties between Russia's meddling in the U.S. election and Trump's 2016 campaign, called Trump a morally unfit leader in an interview with ABC News on Sunday, saying Trump may be vulnerable to blackmail by Russia. A Dallas-bound Southwest Airlines plane made an emergency landing at Philadelphia International Airport after suffering engine trouble during the flight. Flight 1380A Boeing CO737300 was bound for Dallas Love F uh, Field in Texas from New York's airport with 143 passengers and five crew on board. One person has been killed in the incident. A group of Colombian rebels active on the Ecuadorian border have sent a proof of life video of a kidnapped couple. Now, this is the second kidnapping by the group this month. In the video, the couple tied at the neck and hands asked Ecuadorian president to comply with their captors' demands so they do not meet the same fate as others who have been killed after kidnapping. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has said more international pressure was needed on Myanmar to take back Muslim Rohingya refugees. UN officials say nearly 700,000 Rohingya have fled into Bangladesh from Myanmar's Rakhine state to escape a military crackdown since August amid reports of murder, rape and arson by Myanmar troops and Buddhist vigilance. U.S. Supreme Court appeared hesitant to let states force out-of-state online retailers to collect sales tax on purchases, with some of the justices saying Congress would be best suited to resolve the matter. The nine justices heard a one-hour argument in the closely watched case pitting South Dakota against um, e-commerce businesses, a fight potentially worth billions of dollars that could affect states, coffee, states and consumers' wallets. Starbucks will close 8,000 companies owned by U.S. cafes to train nearly 1,75,000 on how to prevent racial discrimination on its stores. Starbucks' roughly 6,000 licensed cafes will remain open. Starbucks said it would make training materials available to the employees of those stores who are employed by the grocery stores or airports where they are located.
Members of France's lower house approved a contested railway reform that has led angered rail workers to hold rolling strikes, heavily disrupting train travel across the country. The National Assembly adopted the bill, which includes the end of the jobs for life, automatic annual pay rises and early retirement rights for new company hires. In a 454-80 vote, rail workers' unions have been organizing rolling strikes since April 3rd. Now, Venezuelan healthcare workers and patients of all ages protested against ongoing medicine shortages and called for a salary increase. Some 50 demonstrators, including children, gathered outside a medical center in Caracas holding signs and chanting. The local pharmaceutical association estimates at any given time there is a shortage of around 85% of drugs. Venezuela's opposition-led National Assembly sanctioned a trial against President Nicolas Maduro on corruption charges that he allegedly received money from a Brazilian uh, construction firm. The motion gives a group of exiled judges in Colombia the green light to start investigations against Maduro. Now, they will re review accusations that Maduro reportedly accepted $50 million to help fund his 2014 presidential campaign. Former First Lady Barbara Bush has died at her home in Houston at the age of 92 after suffering from a lung disease and congestive heart failure. The wife of former U.S. President George W. Bush has been in failing health and has decided to no longer seek medical treatment. She had a series of recent hospitalization due to bad health. A Cuban President Raul Castro is set to step down, passing the baton to a new generation in transition that brings to a close the Castro brothers' six-decade six grip on power. The 86-year-old has been in power since 2006. Now He had taken over after illness sidelined his brother Fidel, who seized power in the 1959 revolution. Cuba's first vice president, 57-year-old Miguel diaz Canel, will succeed Castro. Britain's Prince Harry and his American fiancé Meghan Markle will attend a memori memorial service next week for Stephen Lawrence, a London teenager who was murdered in a racially motivated attack 25 years ago. Now, two of the killers were found guilty almost 10 years after his death following years of campaigning by his parents to bring them to justice. Super fans of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are camping outside the Lindo Wing of St. Mary's Hospital in central London, where the royal couple's third child is expected to be born. Wearing suits patterned with the Union Jack flag, the fans say they are hoping to be among the first in the world to glimpse the impending arrival. The eager campers have now been sleeping on the footpath outside the hospital for almost a week. Footage released on social media showed sandstorms sweeping through Yaz. Ten people were injured as the sandstorm passed through the province in the center of Iran. Now, this province's meteorological organization said that the storm had a wind speed of up to 102 kilometers per hour. According to author Andrew Morton, whose famous biography of the late royal accused royal caused uproar in Britain some 25 years ago, Princess Diana would approve of her son Prince Harry's marriage to U.S. actress Meghan Markle. Like Diana's union to heir to, to the throne Prince Charles in 1981, Markle and Harry's wedding next month has captivated the world's media and drawn inevitable comparisons between the two. A critically endangered male western lowland gor gorilla was born at 
the Simpsonian Synthos uh, National Zoo in Washington D.C., USA. The newborn has been named Monkey, which uh, Moki, sorry, which means Junior or the Little One in Lingala language. This is the first time in nine years that the National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute are celebrating the birth of a male lowland. A trio of newborn red-necked wallaby joys are charming visitors at the San Diego Zoo's nursery. The baby wallabies are being fed small amounts of special marsupial formula three to five times a day and are also eating hay and food pellets. Wallabies are part of the kangaroo family and are found mostly in Australia and on nearby islands. Celebrated shoe designer Stuart Witzman has put his personal collection for footwear on display at the New York Historical Society. More than 100 pairs fill the exhibit titled Walk This Way. The exhibition will run from April 20th through October 8th, 2018. Now, Witzman has designed footwear for Beyonce and Taylor Swift. He has been credited by, uh, by whom with the making most expensive shoes in the world. PM Modi departed for London to attend the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. He was received by UK Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson. Now, PM Modi is expected to hold bilateral talks with his UK counterpart Theresa May. Tackling terrorism and strengthening the economy will be high on the agenda. Prime Minister Modi greeted the Indian community at Stockholm University. He urged the Indian diaspora in Sweden to come to India to trade, innovate and invest. Harping on his new India vision, the Prime Minister asked the predominantly Indian audience to become a part of the present wave of innovation in the country. Nordic countries welcomed India's application for membership of the nuclear supplies group and reaffirmed their commitment to work constructively within the group with, with the aim of reaching a positive outcome to the, at the earliest. Out of the four export control regimes that work to keep proliferation of weapons of mass destruction in check, India is a member of the missile technology control regime, the Vasana arrangement and the Australia group. Demanding stringent anti-rape laws, Delhi Commissioner for Women Chairperson Swati Malewal entered day five of hunger strike. Deputy CM of Delhi Manish Sisodia supported the DCW chief's demand for a law to secure death penalty and backed setting up fast-track courts to complete the trial of such cases in six months. A major incident has left 21 people dead and many injured. The incident occurred in Siddhi, Madhya Pradesh after a truck fell into the river. Uh, into the river. Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan has announced a compensation of Rs 2 lakh to the kin of deceased while the injured will get compensation of Rs 50,000. The BJP has asked all its ministers to resign from the Mehbooba Mufti cabinet in Jammu and Kashmir. The development comes in the light of the strain that the alleged rape and murder of an eight-year-old girl has placed on the uneasy partnership between the BJP and the BDP. Cricketer Mohamed Shami, who is charged with domestic violence and infidelity by his wife Haseen Jahan, has been summoned by the Kolkata police. On April 10th, Jahan filed a petition against her husband at a Kolkata court seeking a monthly maintenance of Rs 10 lakh for her and her daughter. She also filed a case under Domestic Violence Act 2005 against Shami and her family members.
India's athletes have returned home after a successful 2018 Commonwealth Games and the shooting contingent was facilitated, uh, facilitated for, its exploit, uh, for its exploits in New Delhi. On Tuesday, India's shooters won 16 medals in Gold Coast, seven of which were gold. No discipline won India as many medals at the Games as shooting. Now, there was a ceremonial homecoming for India's boxers too upon their return from Australia. They too were facilitated in the national capital. Three of India's uh, Pulitzer bagged gold in total boxing hall of nine medals. The three champions in Gold Coast were Vikas Krishan Yadav, Gaurav Solanki and MC Mericom who won the 48kg title on her maiden Commonwealth Games appearance. Jodhpur District and Sessions Court on April 17th granted permission to actor Salman Khan to travel outside India. He'll be travelling to Canada, Nepal and the US from May 25th to July 10th. Salman was granted bail earlier this month in the 1998 Black Puck coaching case on the condition that he cannot leave the country without the Jodhpur Sessions Court's permission. American rapper Azalea Banks has alleged in a series of Instagram stories which she later deleted that she was dropped in rape. She said and I quote, I just feel so dirty and stupid right now. Men can just prey on you and badger you, force you to stay, to say yes. Now Azalea further said that she will close all her social media accounts as she is embarrassed. Pop star Beyonce paid tribute to historically black colleges during her groundbreaking Coachella performance and now the singer is donating $100,000 to four black universities. The superstar singer announced the Homecoming Scholars Award program for the 2018-2019 academic year through her Pay Good initiative. Uh, she plans to give $25,000 each to the university to the Cookman University, Xavier University of Louisiana and Wilberforce University. One student from each school will receive the scholarship money. Eva Longoria, Eva Longoria receives the 2,634th star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in Hollywood, California. The actress, director and entrepreneur is popularly known for role in television show Desperate Housewives. Now, the actress was accompanied by Anna Faris and singer Ricky Martin.